On the remote island of South Caicos, a group of students from the School for Field Studies are laying a transect in shallow water. College students from across the U.S. come to the School for Field Studies to delve deeper into their academic area of interest and learn what it's like to work in the field. Here, they're diving into research on marine resource management. This spot in the shelter of the seagrass with a steady food supply of algae is the ideal habitat of the queen conch. The queen conch might just look like a big snail in a fancy shell, but this impressive mollusk is one of the keystones of the South Caicos economy. South Caicos itself is a fishing community and it is dependent on the marine waters. South Caicos is part of the Turks and Caicos Islands, a British overseas territory that lies just southeast of the Bahamas in the Western Atlantic Ocean. South Caicos has a vibrant marine ecosystem, with fisheries providing the primary source of livelihood for the community. For as far back as we know, the Queen Conch has been a reliable source of food in the Turks and Caicos Islands. However, in recent years, the demand for conch has increased internationally, as well as among the many tourists who visit the islands. South Caicos conch provides about 10% of the world's conch supply, which is really proportionately large amounts seeing how small TCI really is. As conch becomes more important commercially and fishing increases, it can put pressure on the population here. And this pressure on conch stocks has been made worse by habitat degradation through development and damage by hurricanes. Conch and lobster catch and landings have decreased over the years, um, and particularly, I would say, in the past six or seven years. To help monitor the health and viability of this important resource, the School for Field Studies has been collecting data and conducting visual surveys. By using a transect, students can determine the average number of conch on a representative area of seafloor. They want to learn how the conch population is faring. Fish populations are in decline the world over. They're also in decline here. In the future, the habitats and the populations might not be as healthy as they are right now. So this is a fantastic opportunity to conduct research before things go terribly wrong and to be able to provide results of research to the government and show them what they can and when shouldn't do to avoid any detrimental impacts on the marine environment. The information we have, we provide back to DEMA, which is the Department of Environment and Maritime Affairs, and they can actually use that information as a springboard. During the transect, the students collected a small sampling of conch from randomly selected sites on the Caicos Bank. Back on shore, they're taking measurements alongside Luc Clairvaux from the Department of Environment and Maritime Affairs. 1.1 millimeters. Or thick. Student Daniel Liu's research focuses on developing ways to monitor the conch fishery under challenging conditions. A lot of these fishermen remove the conch from their shell as they come in from sea to the port. Problem with that is that now the shells are gone, so how can you regulate the size or maturity of these conch that they're bringing in if you don't have the shell to measure? So what I'm looking at is the operculum of conch, which is something that's physically attached to the body, something which processing plants here, it will be really easy for them to measure and see if it is a sexual immature conch. And hopefully we can create more effective regulations for protecting and conserving the stocks down here. Collecting this kind of data from the fishermen is important to managing the fishery, says Clairvaux. Protecting it, managing it uh, sustainably and effectively is key to their livelihoods in the long run. As pressure on the conch fishery increases, fishermen have to travel further to find conch. Fishing areas have changed, uh, total catches have changed, and with some analysis of this data, we'll see where we go with that. As conch gets harder to find, some fishermen instead switch to something more abundant and readily accessible. Fin fish. Fishermen are transferring their pressure onto other species because they're getting lower catches of, of lobster and conch. So the concern is that too many fishermen will switch over to fishing for uh, what, what are called fin fish, actual fish as opposed to invertebrate species. Fortunately, the students are also studying the fin fish population around the island, which includes grouper, snapper, grunt, and triggerfish. We have been collecting data on fin fish industry for a very long time. 
A transect is also used to estimate finfish populations, but it's a little trickier than it is with conch that don't move very quickly. Students roll out a transect line across the bottom, in this case a section of reef. Then they wait a while for the fish to go back to their normal routine. Finally, they swim back across the transects, counting approximate numbers of each species of fish they see. This gives a good overall approximation of the numbers of the more common species seen on these reefs. By Caribbean standards, the fish populations around South Caicos are still healthy. But fishing pressure is increasing constantly, and the effects are starting to show. I worry about you know, the fishing activity because that's what the livelihoods are for people here. They rely so heavily on the conch and lobster and fin fish, but all three of those stocks are declining. Surveying fish on the reef is one thing, but a better way to understand the fishery is to go and look at what the fishermen are actually catching. 37.3. To encourage cooperation, students need to be able to clearly communicate to fishermen the importance of the research they're doing. There's a delicate balance between preserving the future of fisheries and the necessity of feeding your family. Sometimes it's difficult um, getting them to understand that you know, we're on the same team. We're not trying to hinder you from you know, making a living, but rather uh, seeking to sustain your, your livelihood. Students go down to the docks every afternoon to see what the fishermen are catching. With permission, they measure and catalog the catches. Fishermen are comfortable sharing this information with us because they realize that we're impartial in this. We're collecting the data. The government has limited resources, and those resources tend to be limited in their ability to collect scientific data. So we work very closely with them to collect the data that they need. In the future, all the data being collected by students at the School for Field Studies will be helpful for the government as they develop fisheries management plans and for the community stakeholders who rely on the fisheries. But for now, there's one way they hope to foster appreciation for healthy marine environments, and it starts with the local children. Three, ready, two, one, go! The SFS tries to be involved in community events and as a school, we are always having students who would maybe need the assistance, academic and otherwise. We have been able to have a fairly good partnership, assistance with homework, assistance with the science program especially. We are very happy with the partnership. On community engagement days, local kids visit the school to engage in arts and crafts, to learn to swim, and to learn about marine conservation. An MPA is a marine it's the younger generation that are going to be taking it over and going out and using these habitats that are out in the marine waters. So it's just a matter of, you know, putting out there in the schools what's really going on, how fishing can change things, what's happening in the habitats, um, and really giving them kind of a background for the MPAs and all of that. To teach marine conservation, the kids play a fishing game where they learn how MPAs, or marine protected areas, can protect fish populations. Students were taught a role-playing game in the style of Battleship where students take on the role of being a fisher. We give them different strategies, we give them different target species, big fish, small fish, sharks, and then we, we let them play for a little bit and we keep track of what they're catching, what they're missing, and, and how hard they're fishing. And then we slowly change the rules, change the rules, change the rules, like you would in fisheries management. This time you only get to fish once a year. To see if you can actually end a collapsed fishery with them slapping for fish left, right, and center and get them to a point where no matter how hard they want to fish, the fishery actually begins to uh, restore itself. The hope in the game is that they recognize that there is value to that MPA. The responsible use of valuable marine resources takes careful planning and research. In the Turks and Caicos, much of that research is being conducted by students at the School for Field Studies. Not only does this provide an outstanding learning opportunity for students, but it has produced valuable information that will be used to protect the pristine marine environment that has vanished from many island ecosystems, but which still thrives here in South Caicos.